almost dropped me phone. That wouldn't have been good. And then you have a password for it when you're going to take up your questions, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? I am here with Mr. Christopher. I don't want to pronounce your second name wrong. Alison? That's correct. Good. Also known as GTR Get Right. How are you? I'm super. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I've just caught you coming off a win. You just beat... Uh, who did you just beat? Dignitas, right? Yeah. Oh yeah! yeah did, how did it go? <laughs> did, it, did it go well? Did yeah, it, like, it, yeah. It, it went better than expected because we know they're a tough team to play against because we always have tight games against them. And we played them like three weeks or two weeks ago in Dreamhack Summer. And of course, it was we won over there to two like maps zero, but it was like best of one both games, and it was both really really tight games. It could go either way. So we're just happy we had a win here. I mean, we want to go to playoffs, so it doesn't really matter who we play. Now you're pretty much in the deep end of the comp uh, competition, so. Who knows? From here, you, you could potentially win the competition, the right? The, the sky's the limit. You, your dreams, they're, they're, they're so close. You can yeah. touch them, you can taste them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> so, like chocolate, like uh, fondant or something, you know, like the... And it's just got dreams coming. It's dreams made of chocolate and it's just, yeah. you stick your tongue out. It's like palace dream. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is my dream. How long have we been trying to do this interview for? I, I have no idea. Like, too long? Yeah, like two months, three months or something like that. Three years, like four. <laughs> what I would like to ask you, a little bit of a, a history of you as a player. Where did you start? Like, when did you start playing? Let's start off with that. Uh, well, I pretty much started playing Camp Strike since 99. Mm. So I've played for a very, very long time. And I mean, I'm only 25, so I just started up when I was like nine years old or something. Same age, everybody. Yeah. Who's, who's better looking? Leave it in the comments, but, uh, comment section below. It's not me at least. Anyhow, uh, so my brother introduced me to the game and, yeah. you know, we had only one computer, so we had to share times and uh, some weird, like, history between there was, like, I accidentally deleted Half-Life <laughs> and uh, CS back then and I got really scared of my brother and I hide in a little closet or something like that. But nothing really happened. He was just mad at the moment because he's a few years older than me. And then I quit playing, quit, played some other games like Starcraft, Quake, Action Quake 2. I mean, it was other games as well, like Dark Age of Camelot. But I always okay. like came back to see us. Bit of RPG in there as well. Yeah, I play, I played pretty much every game. <laughs> World of Warcraft. Uh, I did, but it's boring. Uh, yeah. I agree, totally yeah. agree. And so, when did things start getting serious? You know, when did you like find out about the competitive scene? When did you get into the competitive scene? Actually, I, I came to knowledge that uh, there was a competitive scene like back in when CPL was there like 2002 2001 yeah. or something so actually I was picking the games back in the days already even though I was too young for even playing the game and like I was not even allowed to be up all night especially since the time zones and stuff but I always seen there and I saw the good old school players like old school players like Hedon, Potty and mm -hmm. like Executor and uh, yeah, you name it you know I've already seen those like cool players and I was like oh I want to you know go there someday and play like in a big crowd and win some games and so on I was never in for the money though but yeah like, I, mean, I just want to play you know yeah I remember because um, obviously we all the same age when I was uh, first started watching CS competitive it was around 2004 or something when Source came out and yeah Heaton of course was massive ar around that tip period a bit before then so you must have grown up looking at him and now you're playing on the guy's team right you're playing on his organization yeah I, I, especially since funny because since I made my own like debut to the scene like in the Swedish scene I actually met him the first time when I became good player like 2007 so I've, I've known him since 2007 as well like personally and he lives like five minutes from me and so on so we hang out in the free times and so on so he's, he's a good friend of mine as well so it's pretty cool actually to, it's it's weird in some senses because I looked up to him and like you know oh He's hit on blah blah blah, you know, it's like he's so good, he was like good in the days, he was like one of the first like really professional gamers and I was it's like shocks me sometimes like when I like meet him and I talk to him, I was like, yeah. It's like ten years ago I was actually watching his game, so I was like, hmm, that's weird. Yeah. And now he's my coach and my manager and like the owner of Peter, so that's pretty cool. Grow up looking at your heroes and eventually you're alongside them. What about your play style? You have a very uh, particular way of, of playing the game, you're known for lurking, kind of really I don't want to give you too much credit, but revolutionising the whole lurking playstyle and really popularising it. How did you start playing like that? Um, and then, well, yeah, I've got a couple follow-ups to that. But how did you start? How did you develop this this playstyle? Actually, many many years back, back in like when Hino was still playing, there was a player called Grims. He was playing, and he was always somehow. 
when they did a rush, he actually accidentally like stopped in the lead and went like a last player and attacked the site last, you know, like tried to win the round by himself and so on. So I actually got to know it very early as well about it, but no one really did use it since he quit the game pretty early as well. Uh, but when I actually started to join Fnatic 2009, like I was, people was complaining that I wasn't really rushing, doing stuff like that and like helping the team as I should. And I was always trying to, you know, convince them that I was trying my best and blah, blah, blah. But then kind of came up with a thing like, why, why not slow down a bit? I don't need to, you know, overextend and just die for no reason, even though I understand the whole point of going in and so on. And uh, Fnatic back then didn't really like it. But when I finally went SK Gaming two years, one year after that, um, there was a player, Robin, in Swedish in and my in-game leader and friend from that team. He, he told me basically when we started the team, like, like basically this sentence, um, Chris, yes, you're gonna be you're gonna be a just annoying little kid. And I was like, what do you mean? Yeah, just a annoying, annoying, annoying little kid on a server when we play against team. And I was like, why? Yeah, you're just gonna be ditching us, do whatever you want, feel what you do, and do what you feel is the best for the team. I said, okay, so you basically want me to never do what you want? Yeah. Okay. Then I tried it out and it was like long before even CSGO came out. I was doing that and I, I think I started in like 2011 or something. I like made a huge impact on the game and like people was like trying to see and understand like, okay, he's always going to come behind. But then all of a sudden I'm in front of them. You know, I do, I do what I want to basically. And that's what the people I've seen and copycat me from, you know, that thing and adding the whole on suddenly like a lurking role yeah. into the game and there's a lot of players out there doing like for example happy for me is doing that yeah because i mean i remember um maybe uh yeah five years ago or so it wasn't r like i at least i don't remember maybe i'm wrong you will know better than me it wasn't as popular uh, it wasn't known that there would be the guy uh like say if you're pushing in one place there would be this anomaly on the side of the map that's just waiting for people to go by and, and catch rotators and stuff um so i do think you kind of popularized it and uh you've uh, made a lot of people realize that there's different ways to play the game yeah like there, there was some people trying to do it but the thing was with me was that i already somehow before i started the whole involving doing you know thinking what should i do what do i do for the team how we can win rounds I mean, well, how can I get the easy kills and so on? I already prepared myself for doing that years before because I was watching a lot of them. So I was already watching the pros. I know how they were playing, how they were thinking, situations and so on. So I was basically like a whole like, um, library. Some yeah. sort of had that like back in my mind with like, I just opened up a player book for one player. I was like, okay, he's doing like this. And then I was like, just countering him every time, every move he did. And I started doing that way before. So when I started to do the role, it became easier for me, especially since I was, you know, this is what I do and so on. But going back to the question you were saying, like five, six years ago, there was some players, but I cannot really remember the names. Yeah. But to be honest, they didn't really do that well. Yeah. But you never know. Some people is gonna take it over and do it better someday. Something that I think it really, which it really helps you with, is your um, ability to clutch up. You have an amazing record in one v x situation, like b above one. Well, also, yeah, one v one, one v two, whatever. You have an amazing record in in uh, those situations. Do you like how how did you get to that position? Like, is it just from playing the game loads, or do you, do you is there a way that you particularly think about those situations when you're approaching what's going on when you're up against two people with bomb down stuff like that? Just pure natural talent, maybe. No, it's yeah. everything is about timing, the information you get from your teammates, and of course knowing how the enemy is playing. It's, there's no real secret to it, but the only problem is like when people think, oh, is it that easy? No, it isn't because you have to waste like 20k hours and looking into every player, how they're thinking, you know, and so on. So. It's not an easy task to do, and I mean, I'm just lucky enough to be one of those, I don't know, weird guy to actually sit there when I was like 14 years old. I was like, hmm, how does he think about this and see it through and so on. So, I mean, I'm already prepared for many, many years for it. All right, and yeah, so now you're on NIP. Uh, I guess to finish things off, any recommendations for anyone looking to get into the game, maybe trying to get to the level that you're at one day, they, they want to do that. What would you say uh, to those people? A lot of people coming up in the game, they're so confused of, of how, how do they become a pro, basically. Play, 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 sleep, play, 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 yeah. play, 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 sleep. You yeah. know, basically like that. It's like Maybe a bit of eating once in a while? Ah, uh, nah. Okay, yeah. Playing a lot, get a couple of friends, like four friends, or people that you get to know when you're facing them online and stuff, and get a team, work together as a team, even though when it goes hard, don't even quit on it, like directly. Like just give it at least three months or six months, see how it goes and so on. And attend so many local tournaments and 
try to qualify online through many tournaments as well. Like, just trying to get yourself out there and uh, try to even come up with new stuff. People would love to see new stuff, and I think it's like, I think we're in that period in CS:GO. It's like everyone is copying each other, at least the pro scene. And when a, there's a player, let's say if I'm watching a random streamer on YouTube, no, on uh, Twitch, I mean. And sorry, saying random could be anyone, but like I'm watching him and I see him do something. Like I was like, hmm, uh, maybe I can take that and do it better. Mm. And then all of a sudden he's in the game and then all the pros know it after that. But try to be new with everything. What your position is, like how you control the aim, like think outside of the box. That's what I tell my teammates every day. Always think outside the box because eventually you will just come up with something new that you never thought you were come up with. Okay, everybody, that is about it. Uh, Chris, thanks so much for your time. Any final words? Shout out to your team, sponsors, stuff like that. So you can shout shout me out, shout me out, please. Really, I really want the shout out from Get Right. <laughs> shout out from you and the Mr. Guy behind the camera there, Don. Yeah. Love you too. Yeah, thank you. Um, Nip, extra fine, extra fine, yeah. even Noko, Noko. Yeah, that's a new one. ASO, mm -hmm. and all the rest I'm forgetting. XMG, for example, we don't have it on the search yet, yeah. but uh, coming soon. And my family, my friends, my teammates, Hiron, all the guys by the organization, and my beautiful girlfriend, Anna, yeah. which I love the most oh. in the whole world. Thank you so much for your time again. Everybody, make sure you follow uh, Chris on Twitter. I'll put it in the description box below. Awesome dude, great sense of humor, and of course, a standout player. We will see you next time. <laughs>